Today I'm going to be trying something that I actually have no experience with, and that is end work and joinery in wood. Now my idea of joinery is typically some deck screws and maybe some wood glue if I'm feeling really ambitious. But today I wanted to actually try to do some real nice joinery using the HandyBot and a jig that I've designed. Now a quick summary for people who might not be familiar with the terms joinery and end work. Joinery just refers to the method by which we attach one piece of material to another. In the simplest case, this might mean drilling a couple of holes in one piece of wood and driving screws through those holes into another piece of wood, joining the two together. And in most of the cases we're going to be looking at today, the joint is going to be a corner joint. So that's going to mean joining one horizontal piece of wood to the end of a vertical piece of wood. Now, if you're working on something nice, you might not want to have screws showing, which would ruin the effect of the wood grain. So instead, you might use a wooden dowel to create this joint. And that would mean drilling a matching set of holes in the end of the piece to be joined, and then driving a dowel through the horizontal piece into the vertical piece, joining the two together, and leaving sort of a wood grain effect um, as the only visible indicator of the joint. Or what you could do is machine away some of the wood from the end of the vertical piece, leaving behind the cylindrical dowel shapes that you're going to be using to make the joint. In a lot of traditional woodworking, the dovetail joint was used. This is created by cutting a dovetail shape in the end of one piece of material and a matching pocket in the other piece, pressing the two together, creating a nice strong joint that can't be pulled apart. The trick with doing end work is that I need to be able to hold a piece of wood vertically underneath my tool. And this piece of wood could be up to three feet long. So I can't exactly set it on top of a table and expect to fit it underneath my tool. So I'm going to need to build a jig that will allow me to clamp a piece of wood vertically underneath the tool that can extend down to the floor. And at the same time, I want to be able to hold a horizontal piece of wood so that I can do my the other half of my joint while I'm cutting the end work on the first part. The jig that I'm going to create for the handy bot is just going to be basically a square bar to which I can clamp a vertical and horizontal piece of wood. So like any good handy bot project, the first step here is going to be building this jig. The idea is going to be to sit the handy bot on the jig like so, positioning the opening at the center where the cutting happens right over this 2x4 in the middle of the jig. I'll be able to clamp a horizontal piece of wood here and a vertical piece of wood here. And from that point, I'll be able to lower my tool down and do cutting on the end of one piece and create pockets in the horizontal piece as well. Now, the one issue that I'm going to have is that these 2x4s have been sitting out in the rain for probably a couple of years, and they're all warped and the surfaces are uneven. So if I clamp my wood to them now, the wood is not going to be sitting exactly straight compared to the handy bot. So in order to ensure that the wood is sitting straight, I'm going to need to surface the jig with my handy bot. That'll mean cutting a pocket on the top side of this 2x4 and also into the side so that both surfaces to which I want to clamp wood are ensured to be flat. So I've got my jig set up on the old shop smith, which gives me a good place to clamp the jig and also gives me plenty of room for the material to hang down below the tool. So first I'm going to cut the pocket of the top side of the jig. Now it's important to only do this once you have your handy bot set up in the final position where you're going to be doing your cutting. If I were to do this and then move the handy bot, then I would no longer be sure that that surface was exactly flat relative to the handy bot. I'm going to create my clamps by grabbing some old pieces of plywood and drilling two holes in them then using deck screws to screw them down to my 2x4 jig, clamping material underneath. For my test cut, I'm going to be using some small pieces of red oak, and I'm going to be trying to do a simple dowel type joint where I'm going to be drilling some round holes in my horizontal piece, and I'm going to be creating some matching round dowels in the vertical piece. For convenience sake, I want to make sure that the end of my vertical piece is lined up exactly with the top surface of my horizontal piece. And that'll just make it easier so that I don't have to have two Z zero points when I'm cutting out my material. I can just run both cuts one after the other without having to rehome the tool. Now I found that the easiest way to get a Z home position is to just move the tool to any arbitrary position and release the router from its bracket, allowing the bit 
to slide down and come to rest on top of the material. I can then zero the z-axis there and know that the bit is going to be exactly lined up with the top surface of my material. So for my first try, I'm going to be a little bit conservative with speeds because I don't want to either chip the wood or, you know, if my jig comes loose, I don't want everything to go flying. So I'm going to kind of go a little bit slow here and take a number of passes. So at first I'm working on the end of the vertical piece, creating these dowel shapes. I've got ramping turned on on my pocketing toolpath. Uh, that means that the bit does not plunge too aggressively into the material, which will hopefully cut down on vibration. With the pegs done, I can then move over and start cutting out the pockets for the dowels to fit into. I've also added a cut at the end to trim the end of my horizontal piece off so that I know that the edge of the horizontal piece is positioned exactly relative to the holes that I've drilled. Now I designed this part with the pegs at exactly the same size as the holes, which means that it might be a little bit tricky to get the joint to fit together. And it's a little bit tight, so I'm going to need to use a mallet and sort of tap away on either side and slowly push the joint together. Now once I got my joint assembled, I noticed that the pegs are sticking out a little bit from the top of the horizontal piece. Now I can fix this with a little bit of sanding, but I think the way to go is to surface the end of my vertical piece just slightly to make sure that it's exactly flat before I machine my end work into the piece. I'll try that on the next joint that I make. Instead of round pegs, I made octagon, hexagon, square, triangle, pentagon uh, shaped pegs. And I used a smaller bit so I could get a little bit more detail on the holes in the horizontal piece. Now this time I machined away a little bit of the material to make sure that it was flat for my joint. So I was trying to think of other things that I could do with this jig, and I thought it might be interesting to create a wooden handle that can be pressed into a flat surface. So it'll be kind of like a mystery, how did you attach this handle without any screws, that kind of thing. So in order to make this handle, I'm going to cut a very long tenon, long enough that it's going to stick out by an inch uh, through the horizontal piece when I press it together. And once I've cut this long tenon out, I'll flip the vertical piece on its side and machine the handhold into my handle. I'll round over the edges a little bit too to make sure that it uh, doesn't you know, have splinters that are going to irritate your skin when you grab the handle. Now, I've been avoiding the dovetail joint just because I kind of assumed that it was going to be a little overcomplicated and I was satisfied with the sort of straight joints that I was doing. But I saw a really cool video where someone did this double dovetail joint where they created one corner piece with two sets of dovetails at right angles to one another and used that to join two pieces of wood together. And I really wanted to try to create this piece. So I'm cutting my two side pieces, my two pieces of wood that are going to be joined to make this corner out of red oak and creating the dovetails of each of those pieces. The corner piece that's going to have the two sets of perpendicular dovetails I'm making out of some lace wood that I had laying around. It's a little bit thicker than the oak. It gives me something more to hold on to. And to make this, I'm going to need to first cut the pockets in the end of the piece and then flip the piece horizontal and cut a matching set of pockets in the side or the top surface of the material. I also decided that it would be kind of nice to put a little bevel on the inside edge of this joint. So I'm going to put the V-bit in the handy bot and sort of trim off the outside edge right there. Now I use the same method for zeroing a V-bit as I do for a straight bit, except for I need to put something hard underneath the bit. Otherwise, the point of the V-bit will dig into the wood when I drop the router down and it won't give me an accurate zero point. So I just drop it onto this uh, router uh, collet wrench and then deduct the thickness of the wrench from my height measurement. So here's my corner piece and the two pieces that I'm going to be joining together. Um, just trying out a rough fit with them and it seems like everything is going together well so I'll apply a little bit of pressure and hope to not break it and uh, it, it fits. It fits pretty tightly and I did a little bit of sanding so that the two pieces would come together exactly flush and 
then uh, clamped the joint back in my jig to machine the outside corner as well. So I think that it turned out pretty interesting and hopefully I'll try some more of this soon.